Why, hello, esteemed friends. My apologies, for I'm putting my affairs in order before I depart for England. Mr. Thomas Clifford has suggested I seek passage on his ship, the Betsy, with Captain Hood at his wharf in Philadelphia. It leaves in a few days. Oh, forgive me for being palaverous. I've, my writings have caused a slight ache in the heads and I've forgotten my formalities. I am Major William Trent of the former Lambert House in Trentstown, New Jersey. It is but a short carriage ride away from my former residence along the Assapin Creek where I grew up as a boy. I am factor of the Ohio Company and power of attorney for those who suffered financial losses in 1754 and 1763. These losses are found in a most fascinating read. This book, Pittsburgh's Lost Outpost, Captain Trent's Fort, by a remarkable author, Jason A. Cherry, renders an extraordinary depiction into my exploits into the Ohio country in 1754, where I attempted to build the first English outpost at the forks of the Ohio. Yet, there are details about my life that's never been shared with an audience until now. Yes, my dear Sarah, I'll be with you shortly. Mrs. Trent wishes me to put young John to bed. So please, enjoy the details or facts about me at your leisure, and I'll be with you shortly. William's mother, Mary Coddington Trent, secured a mercantile apprenticeship for her son under their cousin in Philadelphia, Edward Chippen III, around 1738 or 1739. He lived with the Shippens in Lodge Alley, worked in Chippen's warehouse on Carpenter's Wharf, and eventually worked in his fur trading warehouse as a clerk handling all the books till late 1745. He obtained a captain's commission from Pennsylvania Governor George Thomas in June 1746 during King George's War and was one of four captains who recruited 100 men for an expedition to Canada against the French. One of the ensigns in his company was a young William Franklin, the son of Benjamin Franklin, who later would become the last royal governor of New Jersey and, being a loyalist, would emigrate to England at the end of the Revolutionary War. Captain Trent and his men left Philadelphia and encamped in Albany, New York. On April 7, 1747, Captain Trent and a group of men were ambushed by French and Indian forces, but were able to drive them off until reinforcements arrived. In December 1747, the Pennsylvania Assembly would commend Trent and his men for their bravery. Trent's attempt to build the first English outpost at the forks of the Ohio, present-day Pittsburgh, in spring 1754, and their eviction from there by the French, inspired Philadelphia printer Benjamin Franklin to draw the nation's first political cartoon, exhorting colonists to unite against the French in what was known as the Seven Years' War in Europe and the French and Indian War in the colonies. Later, Franklin would print a similar political cartoon, this time encouraging citizens to unite against the English crown in the American Revolution. During Trent's military campaign in the French and Indian War, he was aided by Native American allies, as were the French. In 1763, after the war, while commander of the militia garrisoned at Fort Pitt, Trent engaged in a method of biological warfare in response to Native American efforts to drive the British from the Great Lakes region. As Trent writes in his diary, after holding unfruitful discussions with Native American emissaries, we gave them two blankets and a handkerchief out of the smallpox hospital. I hope it will have the desired effect. 
His company then submitted an invoice which was approved by British military leadership for sundries got to replace in kind those which were taken from people in the hospital to convey the smallpox to the Indians. It is unknown how effective this method was though. Chief Turtleheart, who received the blanket, survived and met Trent again in 1768 at the signing of the Treaty of Stanwix. While attempting to infect Native Americans with smallpox was adopted by the British as a military tactic, it was recognized as outside accepted norms in European warfare. While Virginia's royal governor, Robert Dinwiddie, authorized the establishment of the outpost at the Forks of the Ohio to safeguard English interests against the French, he failed to provide any funding. After using Ohio company funds in this effort, Trent sued Dinwiddie for repayment in 1757. The trial of William Trent versus Robert Dinwiddie lasted three years, and on November 8, 1760, Trent's suit was won and he was awarded 800 pounds. One of the witnesses attesting to Trent's good character was Colonel George Washington. Trent was commissioned by Pennsylvania to be the chief Indian scout on the expedition in 1758 led by Brigadier General John Forbes in the ongoing French and Indian War. It was Trent who prevented the Indians allied with the British from leaving that cause and in September of 1758 he got within one mile of the French Fort Duquesne. Colonel Henry Bouquet and General Forbes used the information Trent gathered in deciding to continue on in hopes of taking over the abandoned fort in November 1758. On May 2nd, 1763, Trent was commissioned a major. In April 1769, acting as the power of attorney for the Indian traders who suffered losses in 1754, 1756, and 1763, Trent sailed on his second voyage to England to seek royal approval for these debts to be repaid. To do so, he, along with merchant Samuel Wharton and Benjamin Franklin, appeared before the King's Court of St. James in their finest attire. The silk waistcoat worn by Trent is one of the prized articles of the William Trent House Museum. Now more than 250 years old, it is the only known article of clothing to exist belonging to Major William Trent. When Major Trent returned from England to Philadelphia in June 1775, he and Samuel Wharton proposed the land they had been awarded under the Treaty of Paris in compensation for losses in the French and Indian War would be named Vandalia and become the 14th colony. Vandalia would have been made up of Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and parts of Eastern Kentucky. The governor would have been Samuel Wharton and he had plans to build a mansion in the proposed capital of Vandalia at Pittsburgh. In 1783, William Trent served as a trustee of Trenton Academy, a grammar school on present-day Academy Street in Trenton, where his only son John attended for two years in 1782 and 1783. In January 1783, William Trent was elected as a vestryman of St. Michael's Episcopal Church on present-day North Warren Street when it reopened after the American Revolution. William Trent operated a ferry and shad fishery at his plantation near Lamberton, now the South Trenton area of the capital city on the Delaware River. This was called the Lower Ferry, and Trent offered discounts to those who served in the Continental Army under General Washington. After unpaid debts forced him to move to Philadelphia in June 1784, Trent sold his plantation to Elijah Bond and lived with friends in the city. He would later succumb to illness on December 1st, 1784.
hope you enjoyed the remarkable insights into the aspects of my personal undertakings. If you wish to pursue further endeavors into my life, please seek the knowledge of a living history group from the region of Pittsburgh or Pittsburgh. This group call themselves Captain William Trent's Company, and they do a splendid job of portraying myself and the men of the Ohio Company that came to the Forks of the Ohio in spring of 1754. Might I also suggest the adventurous prose of Pittsburgh's lost outpost, Captain Trent's Fort, written by passionate historian and author, Jason A. Cherry. This book is the most detailed look into my life. I highly recommend that you obtain a copy by taking a flying machine to your local print shop and purchase a copy. If not, send for a post writer and Mr. Cherry will send you a copy through the mail. His email is Captain Trent1754 at gmail.com. Alas, esteemed friends, my time is substantially over. While my presence is requested by Mr. Watson and Dr. Franklin in England, I urge you in my absence to visit both virtually and physically the home of my youth in Trenton, New Jersey, the William Trent House Museum. The house built by my father in 1719 remarkably still stands and the wonderful staff will give you a great tour, including my room, which I grew up in as a boy. So in these trying times, please educate yourselves about my life, for it is you that makes certain I am not forgotten. So before we part, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I am always your humble and most obedient servant.